Hey everyone, before we get into the video, um, I just wanted to give a sh huge uh, shout out to Joey VR, Rico1217, and Amoa, who recently just subscribed to the uh, membership. I don't really advertise it at all, I don't ask people to subscribe or anything. Um, it's definitely not necessary, but when people do, it's definitely appreciated. Um, things like that, and the donations on the Steam Deck video that I had a week or two ago now, I can't even remember, uh, when I broke my screen. Anyway, I put the funds aside to buy the new Deck HD screen from that. Um, I've got more ally stuff coming. I've got a pretty big ally announcement coming. Um, so that should be something interesting this weekend to tune in for. Um, and then, yeah, beyond that, um, just thank you for taking the time to watch, comment, or like, or whatever, sharing it, doing whatever, because I don't really advertise or share too, too much. Um, just when I think it might be necessary in certain groups. Um, but yeah, if you've watched, thank you, because that also helps generate AdSense and funds things that I can do for the channel. Um, if you're worried that I'm becoming an ally-focused channel, don't worry, I will be going back to Steam Deck stuff. I'm just getting kind of like optimization stuff out of the way. Um, but I do have pretty much all the parts that I want to do for my Steam Deck stuff. Um, so stay tuned for that. It'll involve thermal upgrades of that nature. Um, and yeah, so before I blabber on anymore, uh, let's get into the video proper. All right, before we get into all the testing, I just want to say that all tests were done at 1080p, 30 watt, uh, 720p, 1080p, tested three times each, uh, CPU boost on, and then three times each CPU boost off. And then the FPS averages were averaged out with those three runs, but the clock speeds and the temperatures, they were put as just the runs and what they were for the averages. Uh, so as we can see here, getting into Borderlands 3, we had a 2830 to 2837 kind of range there. And then for uh, CPU boost off, we had 2845 to 2861. So we can see that with CPU boost off running 720p, we were getting a higher clock speed average with CPU boost off. Now moving over to 1080p, we can see that we kind of flipped and we are getting lower averages with CPU boost off. 218, or 2819 to 2827 uh, to 2796 to 2814. You can see the range there. I won't rhyme them all off, don't worry. Um, so then we can see here 720p, uh, FPS averages, uh, CPU boost on and off. Uh, so we can see here the CPU boost off did actually upgrade our uh, FPS average. And remember, this is a three average run. Uh, but our 1% lows actually were a little bit worse, but our 0.1% lows were a little bit better. So I would say, yeah, you know what, CPU boost off in this instance did do a little bit better of a job. Now, going over to 1080p, it kind of balanced out, but we can see here the CPU boost off at the 0.1% lows did a little bit worse, and the average was technically a little bit worse, but nothing within margin of error, nothing like the 0.1% low difference. Now, moving over to temperatures, or sorry, this is the, uh, yeah, sorry, temperatures, my apologies, for 720p, we can see it was just 7 point, or 73.3, and then 73.3, 73, there is honestly no difference. And you'll find with the temperatures, there is honestly no difference with any of these, pretty much. Now, moving over to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, we got 720p, uh, FSR quality, or, uh, yeah, FSR 2 quality with the minimum preset. So we can see here, same thing, 30 watts, CPU boost on and off. So our CPU clocks were actually uh, pretty well the same. They were a little bit higher on CPU boost off by about 20 megahertz there. Um, going over to 1080p, we can see it's a similar sort of thing that they actually were higher with CPU boost off. And I did double check these, I wasn't mixing these up. Um, so going over to FPS now for Call of Duty, we can see that we got 98.9 and 96.2. And then for the 1% lows, we can actually see that we got better with CPU boost on. So I would recommend that in that case. But again, it's a uh, little like it, it's still over 30. So you're going to have a good experience either way, to be honest with you. Um, and now going over to CPU boost on and off or for our uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1080p, we can see they got 72.7, 73.3 or 8, my apologies. And then, yeah, honestly, they weren't too far off of each other. So technically CPU boost off did a little bit better, but honestly, margin of error is only one FPS less than. Okay, now we can see here going to temperatures again, same thing, 73 across the board, 73 across the board. There's, yeah, that the does nothing for temperatures in these instances, and I'll explain why in a bit. Um, so going over Cyberpunk, we have, you can see here, it's kind of stepping up a bit, but the going into CPU boost off in 720p, it was higher. 
same thing uh, going over to 1080p we see that cpu boost on and off they were a little bit more in line with each other this time they there was the highest run with cpu boost off with the 2049 but still it's yeah pretty neck and neck there so now going on to our fps we can see it's pretty much the exact same thing uh within margin of error less than one pf to fps difference uh between the two of the one percent lows 0.1 percent lows and then not even 0.2 of a difference so and then going to 1080p we can see that uh, 41.8 41.3 and yeah the only thing here is with cpu boost off in 1080p we did get worse 0.1 percent lows uh with it off again now going over to the temperatures, 74 across the board. Yeah, 70, uh, sorry, 75, 75, and then a 74.9. So nothing to write home about there. Going to Gears of War 5 now, we can see that we have a 2032 to 2076 range, but then CPU boost off did produce higher averages on CPU clocks. Going 1080p, we can see that they did kind of even out and now CPU boost on did give us higher average clocks. Now going over to CPU boost on and off again for uh, the aver FPS averages, my apologies. Uh, we can see that uh, 65.2, 65, it was all pretty much the same, but again, the 0.1% lows for CPU boost off were lower than the boost on. Going over to 1080p, we can see same thing, the 0.1% lows were lower, but the 1% low this time was actually significantly higher, and the FPS average was only higher by 0.2, like not even, so. Yeah, going over to temperatures, we can see 76 across the board, and then going over to temperatures again, uh, don't know why that one's so short, but 76 across the board again. Uh, now going over to Hitman 3, we can see that uh, CPU boost on did produce higher averages, and then CPU boost off, that's because Hitman 3 in this instance is a very CPU intensive game in this uh, benchmark scenario, and especially in game as well, because there's a lot of like simulation stuff going on. So now going over to 1080p, we can see that it did switch though this time to CPU boost off, producing higher clocks this time around. Now going over to FPS, we got 62.2 with CPU boost on and then 61 with CPU boost off. Pretty much neck and neck, honestly. Uh, we did get higher 0.1% lows by two FPS, not even, on uh, CPU boost off, but honestly, difference is negligible. Now going over to the uh, Hitman 1080p, we can see 44.9, 44.6, same thing, difference is negligible at best. Now going to the temperatures, 73 across the board. Now this time we did get 74, but uh, that was just an outlier, 73, 73, so pretty much no difference. Now going over to 1080p, 75 through 75 and 75 through 74, so yeah, same thing, no difference. Now, I'll just kind of go off on like an, un like this whole thing's unscripted. I'm just tired of doing all these benchmarks. I've done so many of them now. Um, so what's happening here is honestly, like they say for what Borderlands, I think was the only real game that had a difference one way or the other. And even then, like sometimes the 0.1% lows were a little bit higher. Sometimes they're a little bit worse. So honestly, it still does depend very much on the game, but for the most part, if you're running uncapped, if you're running 30 watts, if you're running, even if you're running 15 watts uncapped, you're not going to see, honestly, too much of a difference performance-wise or anything, honestly. Uh, you can play around with the EPP settings and handheld companion. That's how I'm using the CPU boost on and off and controlling the other stuff as well that I'll about to show you. So the times that you would want to use CPU boost off is if you're in an FPS limited scenario. So if you're capping your FPS at 30, 40 FPS, and you're getting able to get plenty over that. So if you're able to get like 45, 50, whatever, and you're capping at 40, and you can consistently get that or most of the time. And so when you cap that, if you have CPU boost on, the CPU will still boost up and above what it needs to. So you'll still be running full tilt 30 watts nine times out of 10 if you do this. So even though you're running a cap, even though you have V-Sync on, you're still going to get CPU boosting up and it's, yeah. So now if you turn CPU boost off in these situations, it will significantly reduce your power draw. And I'm showing this here in the Spider-Man footage in the background. So you can see with the CPU boost just straight off, it'll reduce your power draw. I think it was between like the range of 14 to 17 watts I was seeing. Um, now, what you can also do if you have handheld companion is you can go to auto TDP and set an FPS limit range there. 
So what that will do, and honestly with CPU boost on and off, there was no difference whatsoever in my observation of the power draw really. Like I could do further testing, but it didn't seem like there was too much of a difference performance wise or anything between the CPU boost on and off, just in my quick testing. But anyway, so if you go to the auto T to piece and I set a 40 FPS or no, sorry, 30 FPS limit, um, you can see that we dropped our wattage down to like 11 to 14 watts at times. So it was even less than doing just straight CPU boost off. So my recommendation, honestly, is just leave CPU boost on all the time. And then if you're going to like if you if you're the type of person to limit your FPS to 40 FPS to say battery or whatever, use auto TDP. So download handheld companion. I'll leave the links in the description. Use handheld companion and it's self it's super, super, super easy. It, like self install everything. You're good to go. Um, and it's dead simple to set up the hotkeys. I'll do an in-depth video on it at some point, but download that, do the auto TDP, set your FPS limit to 30, 40 FPS, 45 FPS, whatever you want, and then use that instead of CPU boost off. And then you still get the benefits of A, not having to remember about CPU boost on and off, and then you just have to worry about, oh, okay, I want to cap my FPS at 30 to save battery or 40 to save battery or whatever. And then it'll just play with the wattage itself and it will limit itself in that range. And honestly, yeah, between doing CPU boost on and off with auto TDP, there's really no difference. So, and you're going to save more battery power that way. So my recommendation would just be using auto TDP um, unless there's something wonky in certain games and you are going to instill an FPS cap, then you can use CPU boost off to save that battery power as well, but it likely won't save as much as the auto TDP function. Um, but yeah, so that, that's my kind of recommendation with CPU boost on and off because it's a pain in the butt to have to remember your VRAM limits, uh, changing that for a certain game. Then, okay, if my, if I'm emulating a, a Yuzu game or something like that, a Switch game, okay, now I got to turn CPU boost on for the better functionality and the better performance. Uh, so it's just a lot of things to remember like game wise, and it's not really kind of auto set up that way to flip back and forth. Uh, with uh, CPU boost on and off with handout companion, you can set profiles so that can go back and forth. But I mean like the VRAM and stuff like that. And even just remembering to set a profile, it's just honestly easier to set an FPS limit through the auto TDP in my opinion. And yeah, to, honestly, there's not really much else to say. I don't think about this, uh, from me at least. Um, there is like the efficiency modes and stuff that you can play with, but honestly, I didn't really see too much of a difference with that either. Um, I, I'll play with it on my own time and just see, but I've got other stuff planned too, and I'm just kind of tired of doing the CPU boost on and off. So my final kind of recommendation, if you just want easy use, is just use auto TDP. It's way easier. It's kind of works better with power saving wise, in my opinion. And you get a more kind of fluid experience, I believe. So that's, yeah, closing things off completely. That's my recommendation for this one, guys. Um, beyond that, I hope everyone has a great day.